Hello, I'm Adobe Certified Instructor Dave Kelly with another neat Lightroom trick for you. This one has to do with the often ignored lens correction panel, which has an awful lot to offer us in developing our images, and it may be the first panel you want to visit when you do start developing your images. So let's see why that might be true. Initially, the lens correction panel was for removing lens distortion from an image, but it's evolved into so much more than that, allowing us to make other kinds of corrections to an image and even allowing us to make some creative adjustments in our images. One of the reasons you might want to start with the lens correction panel is to simply find out if there is any lens distortion in your image. And the easy way to do that would be to select the profile section of the lens correction panel and place a check mark in the box in front of Enable Profile Correction. Lightroom ships with a large number of lens profiles and it will recognize the lens with which the picture was taken and if there is any lens distortion, even a, a minor amount of lens distortion, Lightroom will recognize it and compare it to the profile in its library of lenses <coughs> and it will then make any minor correction. As soon as you place the check mark in the box in front of Enable cor Profile Correction, if you watch the image on the screen, you'll see any slight change that Lightroom has made in the image. Another reason for visiting the lens correction panel first is that in evaluating your image prior to starting to develop it, you may find some things that can be easily corrected in the lens correction panel. For example, if you have photographed tall buildings, or in this case tall trees, from ground level, you may find that the top elements of the trees or the buildings are all tilted towards the center of the top of the picture. This is called keystoning. Another example would be if you have photographed the buildings from above, you may find that the top of the buildings seem to be leaning away from each other. Another possibility would be that your horizon might be off. And finally, you may find and that you have some areas of burned out highlights in some inconsequential areas of the image. These can all be very easily corrected in the lens cor correction panel. The first of these, keystoning, so-called anti-keystoning, and a horizon that is off can easily be corrected in the basic section of the lens correction panel. Clicking on the basic section, the first thing we want to do is place check marks and enable profile correction to get rid of any lens distortion we have, remove chromatic aberration if there is any, and we'll get to that in a minute, and finally constrain crop. In the basic section we have this wonderful tool here called upright and all we need to do is there are four different choices. What we need to do is click on the one that uh, is going to most affect the image. In this case it seems to be a vertical problem so by clicking on the vertical button here you'll see watch the image you'll see that Lightroom has corrected the keystoning. If we then go to the image where the buildings seem to be tilted away from each other so-called anti-keystoning this time we'll do the same thing we'll place check marks and enable profile collection re remove chromatic aberration and constrain crop and then this time let's try the full button here in the basic section of the lens correction panel and you'll see that now the, the edges of the building seem to be parallel with each other and that can be verified by pressing the T key which is the keyboard shortcut for the toolbar and in the toolbar we have the ability to bring up a grid which will show us that the sides of the building are indeed parallel to each other. You can have several choices for the grid. I have it set to auto which means when I hover over this the slider bar down here for the the uh, grid overlay it shows up on the image. You can also set it for always or never and that would be a personal choice. You can also change the size of the grid by moving the slider down here on the slider bar and make it larger or smaller. And if you do set grid overlay to to always then when you hold down the command key on the keyboard or the control key on the uh, PC you can change not only the size of the grid by just hovering your cursor over it, you can also change the opacity of the grid. You, you can't change the opacity when you have it set to, to auto. When you have a situation where the horizon in the image is off, this can also be corrected uh, using the upright tool in the basic section of the lens correction panel. 
And since this is a horizontal problem, all that's necessary is first to, again, enable profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, and constrain the crop, and then click on the Level button. And you will see that the horizon can easily be corrected. Let's bring up the overlay grid again, but we'll do it by selecting Always this time, meaning the grids are always going to be on there. And then let's try the other buttons just to see which, bu which one of these buttons will do the best job. You can see that it's pretty close here to having the horizon exactly where we want it. If we try Full, it changes a little bit but doesn't do j as good a job. And then we'll try Auto. And that's not too bad, but I still think that the Level button gives us the best uh, result in uh, leveling the horizon. If none of the buttons in the Upright tool in the basic section of the Lens Correction panel lead to a satisfactory leveling of the horizon, there is another way to do it. And that's simply to go to the Manual section of the, the Lens Correction panel. And here you have several slider bars which will allow for transforming Im image in several different ways. First, make sure the constrained crop is uh, checked uh, in the panel. And the next thing you want to do is select th the Rotate slider bar. I'm going to reset the image. And what all we have to do is take the Rotate slider on the slider bar and move it to the right until and we get the horizon level the way we want it. And I left this overlay grid on there so that we could be sure that we got it exactly level the way, the way that we want it. Also, it is in the manual section of the lens correction panel that we can make some creative adjustments to our image. For example, if we find we have some lost detail in the highlights in an image, uh, and in an inconsequential area of the image, all we need to do in the manual section is select the scale slider and slide the scale slider to the right and we can eliminate the uh, lost detail in the in the areas of the image. This is just another way we can uh, crop an image. However, cropping this way, we're limited to the original aspect ratio at which the image was shot. And this is not a non-destructive crop. If we were to, the, to open this image with the crop tool, which is found up here in the toolbar underneath the histogram, you can see that the area that has been cropped out is not still available to us. In order to crop and straighten an image to a different aspect ratio, we need to be in the crop tool. And all we need to do is unlock this padlock here and then ch select a different aspect ratio. For example, if we want to crop this image to 8 by 10, clicking on 8 by 10, Lightroom automatically crops the image to 8 by 10. And then to straighten the image, all that's necessary is take the angle tool, bring it over into the image, and draw a line on something that we think should be straight and let go of it. And Lightroom automatically crops and straightens the image. And all we need to do to accept the crop is hit the Enter or the Return key on the keyboard. We could also press the R key on the keyboard to accept it. Or we could click on the Crop and Straighten icon here. And this would be a non-destructive crop because if we were to open the crop tool again by clicking on the icon, you can see that the material that was cropped out is still available. And we can crop the image e even further if we want to. Or we can also change the aspect ratio to whatever we want and continue to cropping the image till we have exactly the crop that we want. Going back to the lens correction panel, you can make some creative changes. For example, if you thought there was still a little bit of lens distortion, you can change the aspect ratio a little bit to get the image exactly the way you want it. If you were doing portrait photography, if you thought that one eye was a little bit larger than the other, you might want to place that eye a little bit further away from the camera. The horizontal slider allows you to do that. And finally, if you thought you had one eye that was a little bit higher or lower than the other, the rotate slider will allow you to make the change in the image to get both eyes level. So it's pretty obvious that the different uh, sliders in the manual section of the lens correction panel will allow you to make some pretty neat creative changes in your image. And especially when the other sections don't give you what you want in the lens correction panel. You also can do some lens vignetting in the lens correction panel. However, in an image like this <coughs> where the image was cropped, the lens vignetting is not going to show. It only shows up in an image that hasn't been cropped. 
if you want to do some vignetting, you're much better off going to the effects uh, panel, which is the next one down, and use your vignetting there. Because even if you crop the image after you've placed vignetting in the effects panel, the post crop vignetting will still uh, show up in the image. The fourth and final section of the lens correction panel is the color uh, section, which has to do with removing chromatic aberration, which is a color fringing around the areas of highest contrast in the image. Most people can't see chromatic aberration unless the image is magnified 3 to 4 to 1, and then you'll see this uh, color fringing around the area of high contrast. There are a couple of ways to remove chromatic aberration in the lens correction panel using the color section, and depending on the color of the fringing, there is a third way in the tone curve panel. By opening up the color section, uh, the first way to remove the chromatic aberration is simply to place a check mark in this box, remove chromatic aberration. When the check mark is placed, you'll see this yellow color, this chromatic aberration disappears. I'm going to undo that, and if that, if the automatic way to do it doesn't work, then you have these slider bars down here that will allow you to remove the chromatic aberration. In this case, since the fringing seems to be a yellow-green, we'll use the green hue slider bar, and we'll move that to the left, and then we'll take the amount and we'll just move it slightly uh, to the right to make the chromatic aberration fringing disappear. We don't want to move the amount slider too far to the right because we have some other yellow in this image, and if we move it too far, we'll start to lose that yellow color which is something that we don't want to do. I'm going to reset the image in order to bring back the chromatic aberration fringing up here. And now we can see the third way that you can get rid of chromatic aberration, and that's done in the tove, tone curve panel. We open the tone curve panel and then open up the point curve, which is done by clicking on this icon down here at the bottom right of the uh, panel. Then w here we have access to the all three channels, since it's a yellow fringing, we'll select the blue channel, and all we'll do is set, put our cursor in the center of the screen and just move it up just slightly, and you'll see the chromatic aberration disappears. So it should be obvious that, as with most of the uh, things in, in an image that need to be corrected or eliminated in developing the image, there are multiple procedures or techniques that can be used to accomplish the same thing. And the Lens Correction Panel offers multiple simple and easy ways to make corrections in developing an image. And for that reason, it may be one of the first panels that you want to visit when you start developing your image. All of this information is available in Lightroom 6 slash CC Made Easy, which is available on Amazon.com in both the hard copy and in the Kindle version. Or from a link to the publisher on my website, dekphotography.com. Thanks very much for watching.